mid-February in the UK and the dawn was rising, bringing its regular chill and frost across the land as winter still held its bite. The days were short and the nights were long and the temperatures low. A perfect time to be testing me latest way to warm the crib up. Let's go. Welcome to the channel if you're new here, welcome back if you've been here before. I think it's fair to say over this winter period we've tried one or two different ways of trying to heat the crib up. We started with a really big heat tube that did a great job, used a bit of power but was a little bit too big to fit in the crib. I then purchased an electric blanket which I never got out of the wrapper and never tried and would probably have been okay even though it was only for when you were in bed. We then wasted a lot of time and money and effort on a poxy little desktop heater which did absolutely nothing. But the internet's telling me there's another way. And of course everything on the internet is real and true. So when it says that I can heat the crib up with tea lights, those little candles, well I'm believing them. But here's the thing, with all the other experiments we did, there was one main thing wrong with them. They weren't really experiments. But tonight, we're going full on chubby checker scientific mode. I finally got around to buying a thermometer thing that's going to uh, give us a heat reading. I've got myself a big old pack of tea lights and a couple of terracotta flower pots with lids or stands, depending on which way around you put them. So we're all set to see if you can actually heat the crib up with a poxy little candle. On top of that, oh yes, we're gonna have a giggle with this one. We're staying local, yokel. I've got a trig point that I wanna give a slap and tickle to, not too far from where I am now. And then a pocket little car camping spot that I've never seen before, between two little villages up near where old man Grumps to live. So, might have to give him a little visit along the way, you know, you know. As for now, the scene's set and the mission's are good to go. It's gonna be a good one today. I've got good vibes. Let's get it on. absolutely mental I've lived in Leicestershire all my life and not only have I never been to this woodland that we're going to I've never been around this area either especially these roads absolutely awesome it just goes to show you doesn't it when you start hunting for bits like trig points and I don't know I do the geocaching as well it just gets you out into spots that you never knew existed especially that geocaching you gotta try it it's wicked like for yourself or take the kids or grandkids out or something it's mad you'll find so many little trails and spots around the area where you live a promise that you never knew existed it's so cool and yeah i think today's going to be like that as well i'm so psyched it's just local yokel but yeah i'm buzzing for it mate it's cool wow we're almost there <laughs> oh, 800 meters look at the weather oh it's gone from blue sky to gray this looks ominous looks like it's gonna piddle it down and not got me gear with me because I'm local. Didn't think I'd need it. Gutted. Could get wet here. We. Oh, we're entering Leicestershire. <laughs> we weren't here, love, bro. I'm lost. This is mad. We're here. We're here. Game on. For parking. Oh, hope we ain't got to pay. Oh my days. Might get free cars in here. Yes or no? Oh, in there like swimwear. Good news as well. Uh, I found a raincoat. Bad news, honestly, I haven't got Scooby-Doo where I am or where I'm going. The trail apps, I was looking at them, and there is a trail around here. I'm a bit gutted if I'm honest. It's seven and a half miles, and it incorporates or encompasses this woodland and a little abbey thing called St. Bernard's Abbey, which I'd kind of like to have a little look at, but I couldn't work out if it encompasses this like trig point, and it's just weird. I'm using a random trail app today. I can't honestly remember what it's called, but I'll chuck it on the screen. It's a little bit limited. There's no actual trails. I'm hoping it's showing me at the minute, and like near where the trig point is, and a route to get to it. So yeah, fingers crossed we can find it, but nice little bumble in an area I've never been in. 
pretty cool. Nightmare. I've just had a look at that trigger. I'm not a dot on the map, am I? Oh, mate, the map's well limited as well. Uh, yeah, this could be a bit of a nightmare. I guess I'm just going to head to the high point. I mean, that's where it's going to be, I guess, because that's where triggies are. And from what I was looking on that really minimal map, yeah, I think that's the car park. Oh, I know that's the car park, but on the map, it was the car park, and it seems to be a straight route. So, fingers crossed. There's no idea if I'm going to be close to it or not, though. You know what I mean? <sighs> Random map, and no phone signal around here whatsoever. <sighs> Good going. Here we go. Wicked little spot, though. Oh, I really wish I brought the dog with me. Being local, I could have just brought him out and then dropped him off later, but he needs a good run, you know what I mean? Being a beagle, he's just full of energy. He's five years old and he hasn't slowed down at all since he was a puppy. He needs to run about 10 mile a day. Kind of cool that I got the e-bike, so legit I've been taking him like round the fields because he bounds and he just runs, he don't walk. And I can just about keep up with him on the e-bike, so it's been pretty good. Oh, tell you what's even better. Short and sweet, you know, you know. That looks like the tricky spot. Sight. Well, I did want to get a drone shot. Oh, I don't think that's going to happen. Nightmare. But yeah, sneak a bit of slap and tickle, you know, you know. Let's go, let's go. Wicked, mate. I found it. Another little tricky in Leicestershire. Spot on, mate. Well, it might be a rock. Might not be it. We're close, though. Oh, saying all that, that is a rock. But that is the trigger. No way, wicked mate. Sight. Let's go. Well, without a shadow of a doubt, the easiest accessed and my shortest triggy that we've ever come across. But nevertheless, a sneaky little slap. Ah, tickle baby. Wicked mate. Totally sight with this. Just two minutes out of the car and rating triggies, man. Bit of a bumble fluff to find, but. What a spot. There's not much of a view. Here, let me show you. Wake here, the crib's inside. And I was just thinking, you know, that Abbey's over this side somewhere. I don't know whether it's like, couple of fields over i'm not going looking for it today but i will definitely like to fathom it and maybe come back another time saint bernard's abbey did i say castle abbey it's got to be something spanking isn't it and it's like 20 minute 30 minute drive from where i live pretty cool more importantly though talking about driving i think we should get ourselves over to the spot for the night or i've got a little quirk as well but before let me just show you something this is pretty cool oh, these oh, oh, oh. Bear with. Oh, portable oh, power stations. And if you're new to the series, these are what I'm going to be using tonight to power my slow cooker to cook the stew with. But if you're a regular to the series, you'll know I've had these for about a year. I've been using them both on and off. And most recently, I've just done a two week trip to Scotland and I took both of these with me. But here's the question which one of these two was the go to unit? That I went to every day and because this one's sitting at the front yeah I've got to say it hands down it was the eco flow and there was one main reason why super fast charging I can charge this thing from zero to hundred percent or rather 20 to about hundred percent in less than an hour or around an hour and when I was away on the trip being able to like haul up in places like the Glencoe ski resort and use their showering facilities where they had a plug socket was perfect. I'd just jump in the shower, have a shave and a wash up, have this plugged in while I was doing all that, and 40 minutes later, it was near as full power and ready to go. Also, you'll know if you saw those Scotland trips, uh, I had quite a bit of an issue with my car battery. One morning it wouldn't start, it was completely flat, so I was really scared and paranoid to be plugging devices into the car to charge them up. So having this with me was brilliant. In the evening, I'd just stick it in the front seat and I could plug all my gubbins into it, phones, drones, whatever else I needed to charge, the laptop if need be. But the one thing I used it for the most was keeping the compressor fridge going. I could plug it into this all night long and that runs on anything from 10 to 30 watts per hour and it'd use about 15% of this overnight, which 
you could plug back into the car charger, drive for an hour and get your power back in the day. It really was a pretty cool piece of kit to use on the trip. I mean, let me show you what it's got, because if you haven't seen one of these units before and you're in the market for them, they are really good. This is a 700 watt of this Eco Flow the River, and it surges up to about 1600 watts. So you can plug in most devices, about 75% devices. It's got your standard 12 volt cigarette lighter, which if you're on the road, so many devices use that it's so useful to have one of them it's got your dim plugs you know that you can plug your old school cameras and some devices into free 240 volt socket using pure sim wave you know to keep that electric flow nice and steady it's all running on live po4 batteries as well and as i've mentioned before you know that's going to give you like about 10 years use out of this thing if you charge it nearly every day for 10 years i mean that's just insane isn't it and then Modern tech, you know, you know. It's got three standard USBs and it's also got a super fast charging 100 watt USB-C port, which you know what I mean, like most of your mobile devices are using them now. And of course, the display. It's got the always preferred percentage on there with your inputs and outputs. It really is a good piece of unit, it really is. Go check them out, I'll leave a link in the description. They really are a top-notch bit of kit. Right, for now, let's keep moving. Oh my days of traffic, it's been an absolute nightmare the whole way and oh, I don't know what it is, the sun's been in my eyes the whole journey, my eyes feel like they're bleeding, look, check it out, good news though, we're nearly there, to be fair, I was a little bit more snarf about this spot, I didn't think this road was that long, but I've just passed the sign, apparently this road's two and a half miles and it's about in the middle of the spot, so yeah, we've got a good mile each, each side of us, you know what I mean, it's, two villages one small the other one's barwell it's like yeah it's quite a big little village if you know what i mean <laughs> but it's gonna get some passing traffic that's what i'm saying hopefully not all the way through the night yeah I'm probably gonna get a few pappers it's not gonna be that kosher just saying but it is a beautiful tidy area i mean look at this we could be anywhere all right we've not got the high hills and dales and such but could be Derbyshire, could be the lowlands of the lakes. It's a beautiful winter's evening, it really is. Oh, it's gonna get frosty though, and it's gonna get cold. Wicked, I think this is it. I really hope that there's not a gate or something that I'm gonna be blocking. I don't know, it didn't look like it on Park For Night, uh, Park For Night on Google Maps. But it should be all right. Oh mate, this is not flat, dang. What? It does, however, have a really tidy view though. Let's check this out. Oh, passing traffic, told you. But, wow, Oof. it really smells like countryside. I'm not gonna lie. Damn, there's some manure pits or something around here, I'll tell you that much. It stinks. Freaking A, I'm not having the windows closed tonight or open. Oof. Right, check it out wicked little sunset over yonder <sighs> pure countryside and a really noisy busy country lane Man. right here's the plan then we could just set up the crib now and chill out here for the evening and to be honest it would be pretty good but I want to have a giggle with old man Gramster because we're not far from his pad I think we go up there park up there and do our little heat test up there and see how long it takes for either him or the one of the neighbours to twitch the curtains and fathom that we're there. So yeah, let's go check it out. Right, I'm gonna hold my hands up. I kind of underestimated the amount of traffic and the amount of time it's gonna to take to get here. It's pitch black, but we're here. You're not gonna see much. It's just an innocuous block of flats in the Leicestershire area, but it's full of curtain twitches and it's where old man Grumpster resides. So let's see how long it takes him to actually discover that we're here. And more importantly, it's getting a bit cold, so I'm gonna set the crib up. We'll perform a whole little experiment. I'm stoked about this. I'm intrigued. I'm invested, so yeah, let's find out. Oh mate, this feels well dodgy. <laughs> like one of the dodgiest spots we've ever been in. Seriously. I told you there was curtain switches. I've been here 10 minutes setting this up. The old dude lives here. 
already the flat above me curtain twisting like a madman honestly if she'd had a window open i think she'd have fell out there's a dude over the way that's like literally just hanging out his window like watching what i'm doing and then there's somebody down the way i'm sure they've got a camera out of summer honestly i feel like i'm gonna get busted or something in five minutes just <laughs> gonna get surrounded by police neighbors calling them in swat team or something you know what i mean i think we need to get this done and get out of dodge mate it's a bit random Good news though, fear not, I've got all the gubbins we need. I've got the old terracotta flower pots, times two. I'm going full guns a blazing. If you're going to do it, you got to do it right, ain't you? And then I've got, I don't know, like I say, lids, or maybe their bases, depending on which way around you want to put them. And, oh yeah, a couple of candles. Check this out. I went in the shop to get some tea light candles, hoping I could get like a six pack. And the only ones they had in six packs were like these gnarly flavours. So I've got the plain ones. A hundred candles. And what am I supposed to do with that? It's just mental. I'm going to use like ten at most. Oh, and... Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. The thermometer. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think it's Chinese. And it's got some random, like, broken English instructions. So... Oh, you got to be joking, mate. It came with a battery earlier, and now I've lost the battery. Bear with. Freaking hey, dude. You're joking. you got to be joking, mate. Oh, that's going to have fell out when I showed you guys earlier. Oh, that sucks. Yep, ain't got the battery for it no more. Definitely not in there. Damn it. I can't find it. There's only one thing for it. I'm going to have to call old man Grumpster, ain't I? Oh, this is going to go down well, isn't it? Sure. Wait for it. I hope you don't ghost me. Ha! <laughs> Hello? Hey up, Grumpster. You all right? Yeah, what's up? Um, have you got a AAA battery? I'm not, I'm why? Uh, I'm conducting an experiment. Come on. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Just give me 30 seconds, I'll be I'll be round to pick it up. Bless him, and I'm not entirely sure he twig what's going on, but uh sounds like he's got a battery. Bear with. Batteries, ha, ah, power for life. Although, oh, they've got that sticky feel to them like they've been sat in a remote control for about three years and never used. Which they probably have. Right. I looked at this earlier and I'm not gonna lie. I couldn't actually work out where the battery went. Bear with again. Oh, you ain't going to believe this. This is a freaking joke. Right, look. Here's the device, and there's no real defining features of where you'd pull something out. You'd think that, but that's a stand. Well, that just pulls out for a stand, and there's no slot under there to put a battery in, so I haven't got a scooby-doo where this freaking battery goes. But, so I'll grab the instruction manual, won't I? That will fold out into a big instruction manual. No, it doesn't, does it? Because this is the world's smallest instruction manual. <laughs> what the fraggle's going on with this thing, man? I need a freaking microscope to read it. <sighs> oh, hang on. No, that's features. Oh, my days. Yep, <sighs> bear with a minute. Apparently, there's a secret compartment somewhere. Ay, 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 under here. Are you tripping? Honestly, really? Because there's so many easy ways of pulling that out, isn't there? What? Even with a sharpie knife. Look at that, that thing's not coming out, man. Oh, this is mental. This is not great. This is not happening. I feel like I'm just going to break whatever this is. Yeah, look. How am I supposed to get that out? Why would you design something so crap? Oh, that ain't right, is it? Ooh, mama, I see a clip that's just broke. Yeah, this, this is going to last a long time, this thing, isn't it? Why? Why? Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. It's... That bit. Shit. Anyway. <clears throat> I'll edit that bit out so I don't look so daft. Nearly fragged it. <laughs> God darn it. Yeah, uh, life. Difficult sometimes. Ooh. Look at that bad boy. Right, now I did read. Oh, I don't know where I read it. Crap, it weren't in there. Um... I've got to leave it to set to ambient temperature or something for about five minutes. 
So I guess I'll go and annoy old man Grumpster and steal a brew off him and then uh, come back. Right, old man Grumpster won't let me in. It's being a Mardi bomb, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. But uh, yeah, I've uh, fathomed this thing out, mate. It's crap. The instructions are useless, so I've had to go back on Amazon where I bought it from and I'll read out the instructions for you because yeah, I still ain't got a clue. Apparently, it has three features and three types of smiley face icon that measures temperature and humidity simultaneously, no less, and it allows you to keep an eye on health and comfort level wet, comfort dry at a glance. Yeah, no, literally, look, that's what it says. It's just mental. It's broken English. I've no idea. So, yeah, apparently, I've got it upside down. It's 12.1 degrees Celsius. I think it might be better, actually, if we make it Fahrenheit, which is 53.8. Not that I'm going fancy Euro-style measurements or anything, just that there's more numbers in Fahrenheit, and I think we've got more chance of it actually going up a little bit rather than Celsius. So, yeah, it's 53.8. Let's start conducting the experiment. Let's not mess about. We've got 100 candles. I may as well go full guns with two of them straight off. And even though I'm putting a lid on them, fear not, I do know the rudimentaries of fire and I know it needs oxygen, so these have got holes in. I just hope it's going to be enough to keep that thing going. I'm not going to lie, you know, I've quite high hopes for this. I mean, ow, they're pretty hot already. Admittedly, I'm putting my hand straight over the top of it, so yeah. No, I haven't got any eye hopes for it, if I'm honest. This is never going to work, is it? I mean, what the bloody hell? It's five little candles and two, like, flower pots. And I don't know, people say that these pots are going to radiate the heat like a madman and create a mass amount of heat coming out. <sighs> I can't see it myself. Although, now I'm putting the lid on. Yeah, you can kind of feel a bit of heat coming out. Oh, I don't know. Are they going out, though? Dude, they're freaking going out, mate. They've all gone out, mate. <sighs> this is going to be a short-lived experiment, isn't it? Crap, dude. Uh, um, what am I doing wrong? I don't know. Maybe I got the pot the wrong way around or something. I doubt it. That's going to do exactly the same because it's just going to cut off the air, isn't it? Ow! Oh, cool, blimey. It is giving off a bit of heat, though. Ah, though. Ah. Yep, yeah, one's gone out. Oh, this sucks, dude. Look, they've all gone out again. Damn it. I know what the problem is. All the ones I saw on Amazon, they were like this, but they got a pole in the middle, so this thing sort of hovered above it a little bit. And they were also about 25, 30 quid, and this was about two, with that four quid. That's why I opted for the cheaper option. Sometimes you get what you pay for, I guess. I do have a second cunning plan, though. I'm going to go and have a word with nature. Bone time. Nature has provided um, rather some processed stone, but hang on. Yeah, a couple in the pocket as well. This should do the job of high hopes. Let me just try it out. Freaking A, dude. Yeah, it's not going to fall or anything. That'll work. Just going to say it. Life should not be this difficult. You do. Oh. 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 Yeah, man. We're in. It's got air as well. Come on, don't tell me that's not going to work. Ah. Uh ah. -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, that works. Ish. Right. That's working. Let's get the other one lit. Right. All right. The science commence. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that one works. And that one's still lit. They look really nice without the, without the light, aren't they? But more importantly, with the light on, it is 53.4 Fahrenheit. They actually feel pretty cool. They'd be nice to just warm your hands on, but then again, you could just light a couple of freaking candles on the desk, I guess. But no, that's not the experiment. But I think we're going to have to give it at least 20 minutes just to get a bit of heat coming through that top bit into the area. 53.4, 53.6. I'm thinking I just wafted it over the top a little bit. 20 minutes, see how we go. Well, it's not been 20 minutes. I'm getting impatient. I can't wait any longer. I'm too excited. But, <laughs> oh, the good news, it has actually made a bit of a difference. We've gone from 53.4 to 
to 55 degrees in about 15 minutes. No, it's gone to 55.2 now. We've gone a whole two degrees up in 15 minutes. Oh my days. I reckon if we left that for a couple of hours, just left that going, I reckon you'd end up with about five or six degrees, maybe a few more. And you got to think, if it was zero degrees in here, like it was minus 10 in Scotland a few weeks ago, that's a considerable amount of heat to be like adding to the crib. Wow. Thing is though, as amazing bubbles of a scientific experiment as this was, we don't really have anything to compare it against. Of course, when we used the heat tube, we didn't have the thermometer. And when we used the little desktop heater, <laughs> we didn't have the thermometer. 55.4, it's still going up. I've got something I can compare it against. I've got a bit of an idea. Bear with. Let's go. 100 candles in the mix. And I've got to be honest, when I was thinking about doing this yesterday, it seemed like a really good idea. And now it's all laid out in front of me. Yeah, I'm not feeling that vibe so much, I've got to be honest. But, here's the logic. We're on 57.6, it's going up. Oh, 3.2 degrees, 3.3 .3 and rising. That's 10 candles. This is 100. I mean, exponentially speaking, it should tenfold the heat. So we should absolutely be sweating the chungas off in about 30 seconds when I blow them all out. The problem is, I'm not entirely sure how to light more. And I mean, if I try and use a lighter, let's be honest, it's gonna take forever, isn't it? So I brought the jet boil with me. I've got to say this, kids, under no circumstances whatsoever, Try this at home. Whole more days. What am I doing? This is mental. Bear with. Of course, all mate. <laughs> Need to make sure every last little scranny's tucked in for this little bad boy. Oh, mama. Wish us luck. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? I don't know. Jesus. All my days. Yo! Yeah, I'm out. I'm out. Whoa! Whoa! I don't know what's up with the jet bar, man. I'm not liking the look of that. I don't know. Does he not like being tipped upside down? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, he really don't. He really don't. He really don't. Ah, ooh, ooh. Okay, um, yeah, that gag's not gonna go down. I'm not, I'm not trying that. That's, yeah, moving on. Yeah, back to the lighter. Wow. Yeah, just remember guys, if you've got a jet boil, freaking hey dude, never turn it upside down. Oh God, the old place stinks of gas. <laughs> and then he carries on. I mean, have you not learnt already? This is a bad idea. Hey, it's going to take forever to light these freaking candles. Oh my days, this is taking forever. I'm oh, sweating my bloody jungle off. Oh, nearly there. <sighs> Seriously. I'm not being funny. I'm sweating my absolute chunger off, and there's no way I can light any more candles. Better not believe over it. Right, let's get serious. Cause I need to blow these candles out, mate. It's gone mental. 68.9. Oh my god. Oh my days. It's so hot in here. It's ridiculous. But I can confirm. Ah, oh, the tea light candles work, man. You just need one or two of them. Or oh, more like 90. I've still got 10 left. Jeez. Right, scientific experiment over enough. And I think we need to get out this spot. It's getting late now and I'm gonna annoy the neighbors. So I'm gonna clear all this up, put the crib down and get over to that spot for the night and get some scran on. I'm absolutely famished. <laughs> I'm sucking in way too much candle smoke. Let's go. <coughs> Nightmare. I'm not getting old man grumps through his batteries back. Check this out. He's just turned up. What's up, Dave? Two batteries. What's that? Two batteries. Two batteries. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, okay, dude. All right, oh, don't, 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 don't hate me for them batteries, bear with <laughs> I was just thinking about that thing. You're like, yeah, I'm going to drive off these batteries. It's all I'll hear for the next two weeks. But no, he was having none of it, was there? Right, let's get out of it. Let's get to the spot. Oh, I tell you what, it's getting cold. I can feel it outside coming through the window and there's been fog all along these country lanes. It's gonna be a fresh one tonight. I wanna get this scram set up pretty quick. I'm famished and warm up the crib. But again, yeah, let's do it. Right, I need to get a little bit serious before we start this one because I've gotta say, it's not easy in life as a human being to admit your own mistakes and failings. But I'm gonna sit here now and hold my hands up and say, the last time we attempted this was an absolute freaking disaster. Four hours of cooking and the meat was still raw and the vegetables were still crunchy. So hopefully I can be like other people in the world and learn by my own mistakes. But more likely, I'm just gonna give it a go and have that have a go attitude again and it's probably going to be a mess and balls up. But here's the thing, it's a loss of averages, isn't it? The more times I do it, the more chances it are that it's going to be a success. This is the second time. Now let's hope it don't take five or six attempts, but I am learning from mistakes because I know what I did wrong. We didn't parboil anything, did we? And we didn't pre-fry the old meaty stuff, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, yeah, stick it all in a frying pan, pretty much cook it and then just put it in the slow cooker for two hours and just wait like a madman for no reason you just eat it out the frying pan i don't get these stew things that's why i did it the way i did it last time i thought it was some special thing that you put in the slow cooker and let it cook for like a day or something and then it just tastes divine no everybody else just fries it up so it's pretty much cooked sticks in there for half hour and then serves it up and pretends it's a slow cooked stew it's not is it it's a fried stew but yeah, let's do it. Ooh, really hate touching that. <laughs> really should clean it at some point. Just a thought. <laughs> no messing. <laughs> Big guns tastic. There shouldn't be too much that can actually stick to it today, so it should be alright. I actually think that's had a clean. Maybe not. Plenty of gobbins and oil, you know. That's the secret. Keep it sticker. Gooey and sticker, always better. It's never nice putting meat into something dry, is it? Be eight. Right, innuendo tastic. Mate, look at that bad boy. The first, the Provence. I don't know if it's the Provence, but yeah, it's gravy. Oh, Jesus, I'm gonna blow myself up. <coughs> Butane gas. Mate, that stinks, dude. It didn't like, needless to say. Oh, let's go. This can't fail, man. This, this is the dream. 2023. And that was the thing, wasn't it? We caught that last one. It was 2022. No. New me. New guns. New cribs. Oh, we're living the dream, mate. This is going to be absolutely spanky doodle. This one's going to go in the cookbook. Yeah, the car camping cookbook. Probably going to release it around Christmas time. Just giving you a little bit of a heads up at the minute. You know, again, them business plans out there. And I should say as well, <sighs> talking business plans. Because, we, you know... It's love, when he's wearing cheese and all that. Only sweet, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, get ready. I'm, I'm telling you now, man. Photo shoot, planning another one. Promotional for the Only Sweet. As I've got stickers coming out, or probably out already by now on the website. You do, you do. Link in description. But, yes, promotional for the Only Sweet. For those of you that don't know, Only Sweet is essentially a fictitious business that I dreamt up for people with a penchant for hairy feet. And as the saying and phrase goes, the only feet is for the hairy foot lover in none of us. Yeah. Making millions out of it. Mate, only fans ain't got a touch on it, I'm telling you about. When the world catches on, yeah, I'm going to be like, who Hefner? Was it who Hefner? <laughs> I don't know, the playboy dude. <laughs> yeah, rich, living in a mansion. With like a million women around me. I don't know. Oh, that'd be minging though, wouldn't it? Because I'm only feet. All them women would have really hairy feet. <laughs> but I love it, honest. Meat's cooking. I say it's cooking. 
It's fucking Tuesday. It might be cut by bleeding Thursday. Look at the state of it. It's taking forever. Come on already. I'm on half heat. Oh, yeah. And I will say, because some of you, I know, I'm just I'm putting it out there. Right, look. You, you mentioned the flame. Okay, so this is... Oh, crap. Oh, yeah, we might have a major problem. I think we're out of gas. Damn it. <laughs> what? Bear with. Mm, good news. More gas. Yeah, the uh, ah, the flame thing. Oh, mama. Bear with. Yep, ah, that'll work. Yeah, I mean... Oh, oh, hello. What are you saying? Hey, uh, yeah, that's on. And um, low flame. Uh, yeah, you don't really have one. It sort of gets to low flame. It's like my shower. It's crap. You know, you move it. You get a lot low flame. And then I'll move it a millimetre. And it's off. That'll just flick off in a second. It's gnarly, dude. It's not much of a low flame. It's not very regulatable, if you know what I mean. It's kind of like dead, dead low or full power chubby checker. Full guns are blazing. <sighs> Don't seem to be doing bogger all at the minute, though. Come on, man. It's still raw. Oh, the bloody slow cooker will be quicker than this. Right. Uh, maybe doing this wrong. I'm not going to lie. I've just called old man Grumpster. And yeah, I said I want his poor boil it. <sighs> This is kind of getting to the remnants of like burning mode and he said I just needed to like just fry it off for a couple of minutes so um yeah that's that's going straight in the pot mate we're good to go um at least I know I'm not going to get food poisoning yeah no right uh, stage two what do you mean? I think you should fire these vegetables that'll kind of work won't it it's easier than getting the other bloody pan out oh that looks good huh mmm Alright, I mean, I've never, like, fried a new potato before, but, um, well, I guess it's a first. Time for everything. This is, this is not the right idea. i got to cut them up, man. They ain't never cooking. I don't care what planet you're from. In with the mini spuds, then. Oh, I've got to be honest. My levels of confidence of success rates on this meal are slipping pretty quickly. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure this frying aspect was a good idea. Maybe boiling vegetables would have been better. Right, stuff's starting to stick to the pan and burn, so I'm guessing it's about ready to throw in the uh, slow cooker, you know. Dang, don't miss. Oh, look, see? See? Loads of it sticking. Uh, mama. Right, stage two complete. On to hurdle number three. The making of the sauce. Oh, mate, this looks good. And it starts with the liquid of life. Oh, yeah. Boiling water. Do you think? Right, decision's time. I well, don't really know if it's going to matter. Do I put the sauce in first or do I put the hot water in first? I don't know. I should flip a coin, but I didn't. We're going straight in with the sauce. Oh, my days. Oh, it's a bit sloppy. To say the least, but it does look really thick, tasty gravy. Oh, that looks nice. Trying desperately not to get it all over my hands, though. Not doing a great job. Yeah, mate. That tastes pretty lush, to be fair. Oh, thank goodness. Handle on the kettle's not red hot like it normally is. So I'm thinking... Oh, I don't know, really. I just want to cover it, don't I? I can always have more later, can't I? You know what I mean? I guess I wanna stir it up. Movement of the casserole. Oh, stew, depending on where you're coming from. I don't know. It's to the own. Stew, casserole. Oh, mate, is there any difference between a stew and a casserole? Hit me in the comments. I'm not gonna be out to sleep tonight. It's gonna drive me nuts. More importantly, oh, you're steaming up. And I think this is gonna actually take about two hours. So, here's one I prepared earlier. No, it's not. I freaking wish it was, because, yeah, this is just going to take for hours and forever. And I'm freaking starving. Mate, it's not going to be ready till about 11 o'clock tonight. It's going to be mental. I'm so glad there's Champions League football on tonight. Right. All we got to do now is wait. One eternity later. Right, seriously. I don't even care anymore. It's one o'clock in the morning. This is like Virgin Beyond the Ridiculous. It's like Cliff Richard on Overdrive. It reminds me of a time... When I was in Indonesia on Gili Chuangan and we ordered food in a restaurant. Oh my days. There was four of us all together and we were the only people in the restaurant. We all ordered food and after an hour it still hadn't arrived. It took about an hour and a half to arrive and when the dude came out, 
he was only carrying one plate. <laughs> it's like, oh, and I have to serve one meal. And then every half an hour or 45 minutes later, the dude would bring out another plate. We were there for about three and a half hours, like one meal. Which now I think about it, oh, it's the same amount of time I've been cooking this stew. Uh, maybe longer. Good news though, it's about cooked, I think. I really do think it is as well, legit. I'm gonna try and find a potato because that'll be the telling thing. Mate, this is like, it, it, I don't even know why it's not cooked. The thing's like molten lava, dude. Should all be just a sludge in the bottom because it's melted, but. F f uh -huh. I guess I should try a bit of meat. Damn, that potato was really hot. <laughs> I swallowed it 30 seconds ago and my throat's still burning. I mean, obviously it's cheap meat. I'd say it's Parsons' nose, but it's not. It's Pig's Bomb instead. It's from Audi, isn't it? And they're the cheap ones, so they're not using the best cuts, but yeah, tastes pretty good. Oh, I'm psyched. Finally, we sorted the stew. I'd probably put a bit more gravy in that just to make it a bit thicker next time, but yeah, for now. Oh, finally. Dude, it's like two in the morning, better sleep. I'm gonna sleep and I'll catch you tomorrow. I think I'll be all right here, to be honest. I've had about three cars go by all night. No one perhaps, and I don't think I'm gonna get any bother. The only thing I'm thinking is like, it's probably gonna get busy pretty early on because there's industrial estates around here and such, and I bet people use the road, so yeah. Catch you in the morning. Oh, stew, dude. <sighs> Could almost have a bit for freaking breakfast. Morning. Oh my days. I mean, I say morning <laughs> in a brief sense. It's like quarter to 12. I can't believe it, mate. It's so late. I've slept for hours. I mean, surprisingly, since I got bed about half two in the morning, but it was quiet last night. Not too bad. But to be honest, it's been well noisy all morning and I've had a few pups, but I can't help it. Not only that, but once I'm in my pit and I'm comfy, I'm comfy, I weren't getting up, mate. I'm like a tawny owl at the minute. I've just become nocturnal, but I've got to be honest, I'm pretty happy with the way this one's gone down. Not only have we found some decent little spots for overnight in an ark in a, in a yokel local area, but the scientific experiment was a success. Yes, you can light the car, or rather, set the car on fire with 100 tea lights, and at the same time, it heats it. And more importantly, we successfully cooked a stew. But it took four hours. But I think this is probably going to be the best point to episode to end the episode. Watch. Huh. As always, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, all the good stuff, hit the like button, subscribe to keep up with the series, and definitely hit me in the comments. Big shout out to channel members. You know, you know, for your continued support. And as always, take it easy, enjoy the camp, and stay stealthy. Let's go! Springtime's on the way, baby. Arr!